Hello, my name is Edgar Palacios and I am the data scientist here at ULAP. And in this video, I'll be covering how to prepare and serve an LLM using ULAP's inference server via a notebook. So in case you're not aware, AI model serving is the process of making machine learning models available to applications via APIs so that the models can be used to make predictions on new data. For example, if you have a machine learning model that can recognize faces, you can use an inference server to expose that model as a web service and then feed it an image as an input and return the name of that person in the image as the output. Before we're able to serve a model, however, there are a few steps that you need to take in order to prepare that model for the serving process. So in general, there's three main steps that you need to take um, using our inference server. So the first one is training and tracking your model using MLflow. The second is preparing the model files for that particular model. And then the third is staging that model within MLflow. The process can vary depending on the model framework with the easiest being Scikit and the most difficult being PyTorch. In this demonstration, I will be working with an open source LLM and then converting that into a PyTorch framework and serving that model. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started here. So we will navigate to our Jupyter server. In this case, we'll start by importing transformers library and MLflow, which are the most important for this demo. So we'll go ahead and run that cell. We'll then open some widgets that I've created here to mask my AWS key in secret. So I'll go ahead and pull, put that in now. Access key ID is there and the secret access key. So MLflow will use Boto3 to communicate with AWS and it will look for these, these environmental variables in order to do that. The other thing that we're setting here is the log name and this is a log name that will be used for the runs. For example, if we go to MLflow, you see that there is a username here for this particular run or all of these, I should say. And so that's what we're setting there. And then the other important thing is setting the tracking URI. So this is a URI associated with the MLflow server. So you can see this URI up here is the same one. And so we're telling MLflow within this notebook where uh, which server to communicate with. So get it. Go ahead and run that cell now. The next thing we'll do here is actually load the model. So we are going to be using a Flan T5 base model. So we'll load the model and the tokenizer. We'll then test that tokenizer to make sure it's working and then combine the tokenizer with the model to make sure that we're actually, um, everything is working correctly. So I've passed a input text that says, translate the following text to Spanish. What is your name? So we should see a response here any second now. Yes, su nombre. So everything seems to be working correctly. The next thing we'll do here is actually start the training and tracking model uh, step. It, Typically, you would train your model here. In our case, in this case, for this demonstration, the model is already pre-trained, so we won't be training anything per se. But what we will do is actually log that model to an associated run. So in this with statement, you'll start a run with an ML flow. And then within that run, you will log that model. And the other thing we'll do is extract the run ID and the artifact URI, and then print that out once we're done. So I'll go ahead and run this cell now. So if we go back to MLflow, we should see a new run populate here, which we started eight seconds ago. So we'll go ahead and click in there. And when we log a model, what it will do is actually register a model and then it will have the model.pth file. This is specific to PyTorch. Uh, but if you have a scikit model, it will be slightly different, but we, all, we will always have that model directory there. And you can see the path of the um, S3 bucket that it is located in. So we'll go back here. Now we have our run ID 
and we have our artifact UI, which we'll be using later to actually serve this model. The next thing we'll do here is prepare the model files. So we'll instantiate a MLflow client, and then we will save that model, that pre-trained model locally, along with the tokenizer. So when we do this, we should see a, a few things. So the model will, will this first cell or this first line here will output three different files, uh, the PyTorch underscore model dot bin file being the serialized version of the model, along with a couple other, two other JSON files, which are necessary for reproducing this model. And the similar thing uh, for the tokenizers here. So we have a um, spiece.model file, and then we have two other JSON files. So we'll go back. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is create the deployment directory. So in order to uh, deploy uh, any model, you have to put in a specific um, deployment directory format. So in this case, there are two folders that are uh, necessary in order to make this PyTorch uh, deployable. The first one is the config deployments.config directory. Within that directory, you will have a model, a file called the config.properties file. And this file I've prepared uh, previously. This file is used by TorchServe to know how to configure the Torture server. Um, the most important thing that you need to do here whenever you're deploying any of your PyTorch models is making sure that the model name in this uh, is correct and also the model.mar uh, file is correct. Um, so these are two things that you'll be changing frequently whenever you're deploying new models. The other thing that we have here is the handler.py file. So this handler.py file is used by the Torch serve server to know how to handle the inference request. So it'll first initialize this class, which is a model handler class. It'll extract the model directory. So what happens when you start your server is in that deployments folder, whatever is in there, it will actually send that over to S3. The server will then pull that, load it onto the server, and then after that, it will start to run through this handler, um, this initialize uh, portion here. So it will get the model directory. Once that model directory is acquired, then we will load the tokenizer. And this is the location where it will be. And then the it will load the model. So uh, the model directory we pass into here so that way it knows where, where it's located. And if everything works out, then we should see a print that says transfer more model from path was loaded successfully. So the other two things are three, three methods that are important here are the handle method. And so whenever you call a request uh, to the server, it will go through this process here. So the first thing it will do is it will pre-process the data according to this pre-process pre method. And all we're doing here is just passing the data to the tokenizer and getting back the tokenized text. The next thing it will do is take that tokenized text and then pass it into the inference method. And that inference method is nothing but the model.generate. Uh, so we're essentially passing the input there and the model is then generating text as a model output. That model output is then passed to the post-process uh, method. And that is where the tokenizer will take that output, um, that encoded output from the model that was generated and then convert that back to text. And that's what we'll get um, as a list um, in the, re in the um, response from the server. So we'll go ahead and create this directory. We'll pass the handler file, or we'll copy the handler file, um, the config.properties file, and this requirements.txt file into these um, three directories. So we'll go ahead and run that cell. And if we go to the deployment folder, we should see uh, the config folder now has that file there. Um, and the model store folder is empty. Now, the model store folder is where we will put the model archive file. And that model archive file is created using the Torch model archiver package. So we will pass a few things here. 
The first thing is the model name. So in this case, we'll just call it model. And this is the name that we'll go that um, we are referring to when we see the model.mar file, right? Um, the next thing we'll do is pass it a version. In this case, we'll just leave it as that uh, 1.0, the serialized file that was created when we saved the file locally. So we'll pass it the location here. And we will also pass it a couple extra files. And those are the extra files that were created when we saved the file locally as well. So the config.json as well as the generation underscore config.json file. We'll also pass it the handler. So that is the handler file that I went through earlier. The requirements file. And this requirements file is necessary in case you have a very specific version of, of uh, packages that you use to create this model. And then we'll finally pass it the export path. Uh, so that is where the model.mar file will be saved. So we'll go ahead and run this cell. And as you can see, now we have that model.mar file there. So now that that's done, we are essentially ready to deploy our model. But before we do that, we have to take this deployment folder and actually put it into S3 so that uh, our inference um, engine can know where to look, pull those files, and then serve them for you. So we'll use the MLflow client to log that those artifacts. In this case, we'll say this local directory uh, should go into artifact path uh, deployment. So we'll go ahead and run that. And what will happen is it'll create a deployment folder within this same run. And you'll see that we con it contains all those files that we've created earlier. Um, let's see if this is completed. Yes. So if we refresh it, we should see everything in there. So we'll see the tokenizer folder, model, model store, and config. So at this point, uh, we are almost ready. The very last step that we need to do is actually publish that model. So we'll go ahead and give this model name um, tell MLflow that we want to call this model T5 base, and we'll pass it the model URI, and then we'll say MLflow register that model using this model name. So now that that's registered, if we go back to our model registry, we should see a file here, a model called T5 base, right? And this is the second time that I've created this model, so we have two versions. Um, in this case, the version two is the one I've just created. So what we want to do is transition that version two to production. So we'll use this method here that says transition model version to this particular stage. So we'll pass the version and we'll pass the stage that we want it to be in. So we'll go ahead and run that now. So if we go back to MLflow, we should see that now the T5 base model is the production model is version two. So we are now ready to deploy. So there are actually two ways to uh, deploy and serve this model. One is using command line, or you can use a notebook, or the other is actually using the UI. In this case, uh, let's say we want to actually deploy this automatically, we will have to use some sort of code base that does this for us. So what we have to do is actually communicate with the inference engine API. In this case, uh, the base endpoint is this. Uh, we have to define a service name, which is the name of the inference service. So we'll call this T5 base. And in this case, this is important. Uh, there's a, one important thing to note here. The service name has to be the same as the model uh, name that you've defined within your config file. So if we go back here, we see that we've called this model T5 base. So uh, when you deploy your inference service, it will look uh, within this config.properties file and uh, look for this T5 base model. If you do not set that name correctly, the deployment will fail. So it's important that you make sure that this is the same as within your config.properties file. So we'll go ahead and run this. And then we'll pass the payload. So there are a couple of things here that we need to, to tell it. So number one, the framework. Uh, we're using a PyTorch framework. We have to pass uh, the 
uh, model folder as well. So that'll be the artifact URI uh, that we extracted earlier, and then uh, add the slash deployment um, to that URI there. So just to give you um, just to refresh your memory, we'll go back to the run. And if we click on that folder, we see that we have the artifact URI and it ends with slash deployments. The next thing we'll do is pass it the service name. Again, this is the name that's defined in your config.properties folder. We'll pass the minimum replicas, the auto scale target, CPU limits, and CPU request, the memory limits, as well as the memory requested and then some uh, node selector information. In this case, we've provisioned a node uh, called Falcon and we pass the tolerations as well. So this will be specific to your deployment. Uh, once we have that payload created, then all we do is use request.post. We tell it, the, we give it the URI. In this case, the complete URI ends with slash inference slash create. And then the JSON will be passing as that payload. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this. And if all goes well, we should see a response here like this. And if we go back to the UI and we refresh that, we should actually see the T5 model now being now progressing. So we'll give this a bit of time uh, to spin up. After a few minutes, the model should now be running. So if we go back here, we'll see that the status for this inference service is now ready. Um, so at this point, the service has um, been deployed and uh, we are now serving the model. And we can actually test that model two different ways. One is through the UI, where we select the model here and then we pass it the payload um, and then we click predict. But since we are focused on running all of these, um, these steps within the notebook so that you can know how to utilize this within your scripts, we'll do that all here. So we'll test that inference service. So in here, uh, we'll start by making a payload folder where I'm going to be storing um, essentially a JSON file uh, that, that looks, well, it's a dictionary that we'll save as a JSON. So the format for the request is key value data. And then the, um, the value is another dictionary that has a key uh, instance, and then within that instance, uh, the value is going to be a list which contains your text. Uh, so that is the format that we'll use, uh, that you use for all of your inference services. In this case, we're passing uh, text, so that's what it'll look like. If you're passing uh, arrays, then you'll have an array there instead of a list. So we'll go ahead and run this cell. So now we have our payload ready. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to pass that request using request.post, um, the URL will be that base, base endpoint. And we'll add slash inference, give it the service name, and then predict is the endpoint that we're actually going to hit. So if we run this, we should get that prediction. So um, here you see the question or the task was to translate the following to Spanish, same as before, which is what is your name? Um, and we get back that translation here. And with that, we conclude this video demonstration on, on how to prepare and serve your PyTorch models using ULAP's inference engine. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, as always, please do not hesitate to reach out either on LinkedIn or YouTube. Thank you again for your attention. And until then.